Good afternoon or good morning, still uh, still before noon right now. So this is the second study session of the day today. And uh, I said it in the earlier session, but the reason why I'm doing two study sessions today is to make up for some sudden out of townage uh, for some family issues this coming uh, this weekend. So I won't be streaming Friday, Saturday or Sunday in the morning. So I'm making up with two post uh, two study sessions today, two study sessions tomorrow, then two on Monday to make up for those three days that I am missing out on you know so nice and simple uh still completing a full 28 days or 28 study sessions just not doing it every single day you know whenever you make a challenge for yourself you've got to have a plan b and my plan plan b before starting this was simply uh, to do multiple sessions streaming sessions in one day if necessary and it's necessary so what do we got going on here? So we're gonna do some hand reading practice. Today we're gonna to be doing some range versus range practice. Earlier today was my range. Yesterday was my opponent's range. So let's combine the two. Uh, then we'll get into a split suit article uh, and some lessons learned from it. The article is how to play top pair against a check raise. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll open it up later. And then afterwards we'll filter for top pair hands on the flop facing a raise. Uh, and then, you know, facing a We'll do this actually. Check raise is what we'll face right there. So we'll filter through some of those hands. But let's go ahead and start with the hand reading practice. Of course, we use our split suit hand reading template, which you can get at splitsuit.com slash templates. We need two windows of Fropzilla open. So bam, bam, our two windows hand reading template in the back. And then we need hold EQ. Now I mentioned it before, but this is a free software that comes with uh, uh, that comes with Flopzilla. And then what you do simply is you tie this window into one of the Flopzilla windows. So let's just se select pocket aces. Bam, pops up right there. We'll tie this window into this one. Oh, it's connected yet? Yeah, pocket kings. And we can see aces versus kings is an 82% favorite right there. Pretty nice. Um, so now that that's all connected, we've got to go through and find our hand. We did a lot of hand reading through my ACR, America's Card Room hands already. So we're going to look at some carbon stuff now. So uh, let's see, we want to filter for oh, hands that went to showdown, of course. So if we look through these hands, pocket queens right here. Call, call, check on that flop. Let's see, what did we looked at this one earlier. Maybe this was the other day, I can't recall. But yeah, let's go to the cutoff now. So we're basically looking for some good hands, uh, you know, to play or to, to review. So we want to look for some high dollar value hands um, because, you know, of course, the bigger the pot, the more action that went in on the various streets to build to that pot. So let's see that one and that one. Uh, one more. It's only a $3 pot. That's only 12 big blinds. Let's take a look here. This one, we ended up with an ace high flush, a king high flush. Uh, so I guess the 10 of clubs, I guess. Two pair aces and 10s. Let's take a look at the action on these various streets. Um, we raised bet, check, bet. That could be interesting. Ace 10. We rivered the 10 high flush. Ace Jack here. We rivered the flush. Uh, oh, backdoor flush. We came in. We did a backdoor flush hand earlier, so let's skip this one. This one seems like we're more bluffing the whole time because we didn't have a made hand. On the flop, we had a top pair hand. So let's look at a hand where we have a, a straight flush draw the whole way, and it looks like we bet, bet, bet. I think this is the one we want to take a look at today. So uh, for some details here. April 15th, so not too long ago. But like I said earlier, I do not recall hands so well. Like I said, we're using Split Suits hand reading template right here, and you can of course find that on uh, splitsuit.com slash templates. So let's see some notes here. This is a carbon hand on the merge network. Ace 10 off. Uh, in the cutoff. In cutoff. Now what happens? Do we three bet? Do we open? We get the chance to open. Standard open. And uh, the big blind calls. So before we see anything, 
open three BBs. Now, what kind of player is this right here? Goldfish, okay. And he's looking super loose passive. I mean, kind of loose aggressive. He raises 23% of the time. It's a small sample, but he's a loose aggressive player, but at the same time, very passive. Uh, well, that's odd to say. Loose passive, I guess, is LPBB at 61.23. Okay, cool beans. So what is, first off, we're ranging both of us, us and him. What is our preflop range? Well, in the cutoff, we can see... And I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try to get through this relatively quickly because we've. I've done so many hand reading exercises. Uh, in the cutoff, we're at 20 percent. Let's take a look at these players here. I can expect to call quite a bit, so I doubt I'm widening my range. And he's unknown. Not a lot of three bets. So let's just stick with this standard. My cutoff opening range right here at 20 percent. So 20.1, 266 combos. Okay, sounds good to me. That's my range. Now, what is his preflop calling range? Uh, let's take a look at him again. We've seen so far, he's calling 2-bet 64% of the time. 100% um, in the big blind, 5 out of 5. So this guy is calling a super wide range. We can actually give him more than like a super fishy 50% range. Let's give him, we got to limit it to something. I don't want to give him 100%. Oh, wrong. Don't want to give him 100%. Let's just see what 100% is. All 1,326 combos. I mean, he could be calling with a lot of this crap, but we've got to cut him down at least a little bit here. Let's start with the 50%. So have we seen any three bets yet? Zero three bets out of 10 instances. So he might be a tight three better. Let's say he's calling with that. Let's say he's three betting, calling here. He's in the big blind. We're in a steal position, but who knows if he knows anything he doesn't fold to small blind steals as the big blind doesn't fold to steals in general. Um, let's just say he likes to call a ton. Let's even put these in his calling range and let's just keep the ace kings and the queens are better in his three betting range. I mean, he's got to be three betting something, right? Um, he's been calling so much. Let's just put every suited. We'll probably get rid of a lot of this stuff. Mm, possibly get rid of a lot uh, through the reading. Um, let's give him every queen and let's give him all these gappers. So, wow, we're going to put him at 69%. I'm fine. I mean, yeah, it's a small sample, but let's put him there. 64% so far. I apologize. Mi telefono. Uh, yeah, let's put him there. I'm not a fan of calling that wide for sure. I mean, he's losing this pot a majority of times, hopefully giving us plenty of value along the way. So, before we enter the board, or before we even see the board... Um, Where's hold EQ? So we have currently 61% equity. So we have a rather tight range. Our range is one third his range right now um, at 61% uh, equity. So we are killing it against this guy so far. We'll see what happens on the flop here. Um, very lovely flop. Got the gut shot straight flush draw as well as just a regular, well, regular straight draw as well, of course, with that ace of diamonds. Um, wait, right? Ace in the 10. Yeah, a jack. So, oh, what am I doing here? Uh, let's see here. King, queen, nine, all clubs. Okay. So on this flop, as it stands, he has 45% equity. We only have 55%. So, uh... We're definitely ahead of him, but he has so many flush draws, so many two pairs. I mean, he just has a ton of stuff in his range. We have a more narrow range, so we do hit it harder, but he has a lot more potential than we do in general. So let's see what the play is. He checks, and then we bet dollar $1.06. I'm good with that. 50, I'm sorry, 66%, uh, two-thirds pot bet right here. So let's see what he does. He simply check calls us. Okay. Let's start with us. What are we betting in this instance? Um, because he's so fishy, if I did have 10 jack of clubs, I would be betting here. So I'm betting my straight flushes. I'm betting my flushes because I'm just trying to extract max value. What was his stack? Oh, only a half stack to start? Yeah, let's still say that uh, we're just going for max value. 
when the effective stack is really low, it's easier to get all the money in. So if he had 25 big blinds, it's imperative to bet when you have a good hand against a fish right now. Um, as a smaller stack, we don't really have to bet right now. We could wait one street, but in order to increase our chances of of um, uh, just getting his stack, uh, it's it's better to bet now. And this is the best time for him to call to on the flop with two more cards to come, as opposed to the turn with one more card. So we're betting our straights. We're betting our sets for sure. Um, trying to get value out of his random, uh, what is it? Random ace of clubs, random uh, jack, 10, 8, 7, any random club he has that he might call. We're trying to get value with our sets. Two pairs, we're betting right here as well, for sure. The over pairs, we're betting the pocket aces. Yep. What was our ace again? Diamond. Okay. Well, yep, yep. We're betting the over pairs in our range. Uh, the flush draws. Oh, the ace of clubs with the other aces. Yep, betting those. Top pairs. Uh, for now, I think these are worth betting one street. Even though he's super passive, that is a scary board. If he called preflop with a you know seven eight off suit with a diamond and a and a and a and a spade, there's nothing for him. He'll he'll be folding right there, and we don't have a made hand yet. So we've got to be c betting. Um, the weak pairs, I think we want to c bet those as well. We don't want to let him see a free club right now. Um, ace highs, I think we'll want to bet. No made hand. Uh, let's say those are betting on this scary board as well. At least one street and then maybe shutting down. And then the gut shots too. So basically we're betting 100% of hands right here. So we haven't narrowed our range at all. And I'm good with this, with this kind of bet. 100%. Oops, I didn't do that yet. Great. So, percent of previous range, 100. We're at 230 combos now. Um, and the reason why it declined is because these blockers, along with his... Uh, well, these blockers uh, remove some of the combos of our hands. But, you know, earlier I forgot to do this part right here. So his range was, uh, let's remove this, 920 combos, 69.4%. Wow. 920, 69.4. Oh, we don't want to highlight that yet. So as things stands, we're 55% equity just on the flop. Now let's see what he does. Oh, he just calls us. So what calls us on this board here? Um, straight flushes, calling. Flushes are calling just, just to uh, slow playing to, to get value out of us. His straights are calling. His sets are calling. His two pairs, I think, are calling. Because he's so passive, he might wake up with aggression on the next street. We can't say because he didn't raise, um, he doesn't have two pair, thinking that he would be scared of it, uh, scared of the board. Now he's calling there. Doesn't have any top pairs. Now is he calling with his top pairs? Yeah, this guy is so passive. Um, they're all top pair hands. He could put us on a weak pair of jacks or tens that he currently beats us with his top pair. So let's say he's calling right there. Middle pairs. Uh, all the queens. Well, we've got some of the draws in that middle pair range. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and filter some of these out. Let's say, well, you know, we've got to give him one street on all of these actually. Let's just cancel. Let's say he's calling those middle pairs. But the weaker pairs, all those various nines, no. Ace high, no, no. Let's say those are calling because the board is so scary. Nut flush draw, if he has the ace of clubs, he's in. Second nut with the uh, jack of clubs. Third nut, yeah, let's keep the let's keep all nut, uh, weak flushes because the guy's just super passive. I think he's calling way too much here, which is good for us. 
if we had a value hand. Right now we're bluffing, so um, but I still think it's worth the bet on the flop right here, just in case. All because a lot of this stuff didn't hit anything at all, especially if it's off suit and doesn't have a club. He's folding a good amount of his range. I think uh, makes the bet worth it. Let's say he's continuing with his gut shots, so he is continuing 70.9 percent. So he's folding about 29 percent of the time. I think that's worth it for our bet right here to take that chance to take it down right now. Plus we have a redraw to a decent flush with the 10 high flush. It's not great. Sure, he has a couple of better flush draws on us. Um, but if we hit the flush, he has a lot of straight draws and gut shots like we put in here that he's continuing. If we hit, we can most likely, will most likely be ahead and getting a ton of value out of the guy. So 70.9%, which is 564 combos. 70.9564. Super passive. He's calling way too much here. I know you can't really read that. Actually, what if I do this? Hmm, well, a little bit better. Yeah, so those are all the combos in his range right there. So, turn, card, comes, an eight of diamonds. Let's see what that does to equities here. Um, da, da, da. Oh. Eight of diamonds. Uh... Now our equity is flipped right here. That eight completed, I guess it completed a few of his draws. Probably gave him some like two pairs and stuff, but equity flipped because we haven't made our hand yet. Sure, things were looking good. We have a decent flush draw, straight draw and stuff, but um, we haven't made a hand. A lot of his range now hit a hand. So we have 45% equity on this uh, turn. And he has 55, so things have flip-flopped a little bit right here. That doesn't mean we shouldn't bet, but let's take a look at it. Uh, let's see your turn range. So, oh, the first bet was two two thirds pot, which is good. Let's see what my bet sizing is, because that could tell that could tell him if we're weak or if we're strong if we decreased it. So something below two thirds pot, if we made it like half pot, um, two forty eight dollar twenty. Okay, good. Made exactly two thirds pot again, just continuing the semi bluff here. Um, and probably if he wakes up with aggression, our plan's probably to fold at this point. So before we see his action, what uh, what should he make of our range with this bet? So on the turn, whoops, uh, the flush comes. That's our that's our range now. The turn comes. The eight of diamonds. What are we betting? Straight flush is still flush is going for value. Straight's trying to get value and charging any random clubs. Sets value two pair betting again. Um, just because he called doesn't mean he has two pair beat. Over pairs now. Are we checking behind with the over pair of aces? I think it deserves one more street and then maybe checking behind the river if the river comes something ugly. I think we should bet again right there. Top pairs. Yep, all those different kings. Mid pairs now. All the queens. Now some of these have some equity like a gut shot and stuff. Um, ace, queen. What would I take out? I think queen, ten. Would, I would still bet with queen 10, queen jack, because I have a pair plus a, a draw still. Ace queen, pair plus draw, ace queen, pair plus draw. Nope. No uh, no removing. Let's just keep all those in. Weak pairs this time. We are looking at various nines and eights. Um, we'll, we'll keep the gut shots in. So we can leave just weak pairs in general out. Uh, and all these sevens and sevens through ducks, we'll take them out too. Ace high now. Yeah, weak pair, I'm not betting. Ace high, not betting. Just gonna... Mm, he called the board, didn't help me at all. Yeah. Uh, third nut flush. I would say I'm betting those in this instance. Mid pair, weak pair. Let's not bet. Let's see a turn. Or let's see a river with those weak pairs. Weak flush draws. Am I betting my weak flush draws? I don't think I'm betting weak flush draws, no. No flush draw, no gut shots. Let's keep those in because we uh, we still have plenty of equity right there. So by by uh, narrowing down a little bit what we would bet, we've effectively cut our range down for us to 65%. We've taken 35% out of our range and we're at 143 combos now.
And here's our new range. Cool, so now, let's see right here. Uh, he decided to just call us. So, uh, the five and four, okay, good. So on the turn now, the eight of diamonds comes. What is just calling, or check calling, actually? He's not donk leading, um, he's not check raising, he's just check calling. Looking at the size of the pot, eight bucks, about a pot size bet behind. Um, I think he doesn't need to raise just yet. I think he can do something on the river. So if he has a straight flush, a flush, a straight, his sets are maybe still stringing us along. Not scared that we have a possible flush draw. Two pairs at this point. Are these check raising? I think he could be scared that we have a flush and not exactly not sure that we're betting a weaker hand. So I, I don't think he's... He's so passive in general. I think he's a, or he's a station in general. I think he's just calling two pairs over pairs now. Doesn't have any top pairs. I think he can call a lot of those as well. Mid pairs now on two streets on the eight. We'll keep some of his draws in down here, but in general, well, if he called on the flop because he thought he was good, he thought his pair of queens was good, the eight doesn't necessarily improve our hand. It's not like now we have a top pair hand. So he could call again right here, I would say. Weak pairs. Oh, now the board. Well, some of them are two pairs that hit, but um, previous weak pairs. So let's leave those out. Ace highs are now folding. I mean, we've barreled on two streets. He should be folding a lot of those crap hands. Uh, nut flush draw, totally calling second, third nut flush, knowing how passive. Weak flush draws. Um, all those random. Well, eight do suit is not a flush draw. That's hitting a flush. Oh, it's looking at all this offsuit stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Why wouldn't they call? I mean, he's been he's such a passive player. I would say so. No flush draws are out. Gut shots now. All of those those are all like pair plus gutters, um, queen jack and stuff. Um, all those tens, yeah, why not? Don't narrow, let's just keep them all in. Wow, so we're keeping in 100% of his range. We're not saying he's not folding anything because a lot of these weak pairs. Um, so let's go ahead, take that off. He's gotta be folding some stuff here. He's not calling flop and the turn on this scary board. Let's say, uh, let's, let's say now he is folding some of his gut shots. Um, these crappy ones that don't have any kind of redraw. Jack seven, jack eight. So let's go jacks and below tens. Let's take these ones out. Six five, that's an under gutter. Seven five, no, let's not say he's doing those. All these over, all these over gut shots are in. Wow, this is interesting. So we haven't really cut that much from his range at all, but we cut something at least. I think he's calling with his open enders. Yeah, why wouldn't he? Those are actually double gutters, but whatever. He has six outs um, if you don't count the clubs. Middle pairs. If they were good on the flop, they're good on the turn as far as he's concerned. So he's calling. Yeah, we can't really, we can't uh, narrow it down too much. So 450 and 82.4. 450, 82.4. Hmm. So passive, he's still calling super wide here, definitely. Okay, so now that we know those ranges, what what are our equities um, after we rain, uh, narrowed him down just a little bit? We're uh, basically 50-50 right now on that turn eight, and after narrowing ranges, we're 50-50 at this point. Before the river comes the five of clubs. Five of clubs, great. So at this point, uh, with the turn ranges that we had, we were 50-50, the club comes, now we are 43, I'm only a 43% favorite here um, versus his range, I guess because he has such a wide range. The five actually completed, I put, did I keep six, seven in his range? Uh, oh, six, seven, oh. Oh, six, seven offsuit is still in his range. Yeah, so he has some straights at that five completed. Um, 
the pair the board's not paired so even if he had pocket fives or something no yeah i mean we're still we're behind at this point but let's take a look at this so we hit our flush and he just checks i think because he checks um he definitely wants value here, right? Even though he's super passive, if he has any kind of a good flush, he's betting at this point. So because he didn't bet, let's remove some of those really good hands from his range. He would have bet a straight flush, the nut flush, the second nuts. I think he would have bet all of those. Um, week fourth, what's a fourth nut flush? Various eights, weeks, weak flush. You know, those have called down. Um, and if they hit, they just might be willing to check call a bet right here. So let's keep those weaker flushes in his range. The straights are not going to necessarily bet out. And the sets, because a fourth club came, no. I think the third nut flush would bet. What are those? Uh, oh, the various ten of clubs. The tens. I mean, he called all the way with a gut shot. I think he's just check calling with those. Um... I'm sorry, uh, no, he's check calling with these as well. Yeah, let's put those, the 10 high flushes, because there's an ace and a jack that can be ahead of him there. Um, wait a second. Oh, yeah, those are in his range. We have the 10, but those are just in his range right there. Cool beans. So we've narrowed him down. <clears throat> uh, we've taken away a lot of his hands right here. He's at 66%. Uh, of his turn range only 281 combos so when we look at range versus range we currently uh, are losing to him but we know that we have the flush so if we just think about our hand versus his range our third nut flush beats the fourth the weak flush all these straights and stuff that he does have in his range so range versus range we're losing right now um we could bet right here and he could shove and maybe we should fold at this point if we're thinking ranges our range versus his but if we just look at our hand we have the 10 high flush there's only uh three flushes that are better than us because he can't have a straight flush so uh the ace high or the jack high flush beats us currently and he's shown so much passivity i think it's a time it's a time to bet for sure so he checked and then we bet and then he calls us right here. Let's see what he calls us with. Uh, oh, wait, before we see that, uh, let's see. The river card was a five of clubs. Our range's equity was the five of clubs. Oh, after, okay, 42%. And his is 48% equity. Yep. So his river range, once he checks, this is what he's checking to us right here. He's at 281 combos. He would have bet third, nut, flush, or better at this point. Yep, yep. So what did that bring him down to? 281 combos, 66% of his prior range. So we've effectively narrowed him from pre-flop at 920 combos down to uh, 281. Wow. Yeah, we've taken away 70% of his range. So things are looking pretty good right here. I think we have a good read on the opponent. He has lots of draws, lots of, you know, kind of crappy made hands, straights and stuff, two pairs and everything. Um, but I think this is a great spot to bet, and I'm really happy that we did. And I think our betting range here is probably third nut, even fourth nut flushes, we would bet, what are the fourth? All the different, s oh, the eights right there. Okay, the eights. Um, weak flushes, what's a weak flush? The six high flush. Uh, I don't think we would bet that. Straights, I'm not betting. For three different streets, now there's four on the board. Um, I'm probably not betting entities, not going for straight value or thin value. So this is what I'm betting here. So we've taken it down 31.9% to 45 hands. And our range is pretty narrowed quite a bit. Only betting fourth nut flush or better. He would have bet third nut flush. Maybe even second, but third nut flush or better, I'm assuming right now. Great. So with these narrowed ranges, um, wow, now that we narrow down the range, we actually have 99% equity right now with our bet. Um, if our range is accurate, our, us versus him right there. 
So let's see what he has. Now, at this point, I guess we could have shoved. Maybe I was hoping that we could have shoved, thinking that he would call. He only left $3 behind. If he's calling 6 bucks or so, maybe he's calling all of it. But I think I just wanted value out of the guy. Wanted him to call with a weak king, maybe a 4 high, a 6 high, 7 high flush, something like that. Just going for value, betting smaller here. Instead of shoving and trying to get everything, not being too greedy. Uh, Jack 8. So he had the ace, jack, 10. Eight. The fourth, the fourth nut flush is what he had right there. Is that in his range? Jack eight, fourth nut flush. Yep, we got it in his range. Sweet. Okay, so we hand read him properly. I think we hand read ourselves pretty well down the streets. We triple barreled this one. Got lucky catching that flush on the river. Um, yeah, we did get lucky because he paired us on the turn right there. So he was ahead on the turn for sure. Um, but even if a jack had come right there, we would have had a straight, he would have had two pair. We could have gotten the same kind of value out of him. So good. A very good hand, I think, right there. All right. So that's how we do range versus range analysis with a Flopzilla, split suit stuff, and hold EQ. Fun times. So let's say here. Oh, that's day 16, day 18. Ace, 10, all. It was success. His hand ended up being in the range. I don't remember. We were 10 out of 14, so now we're 11 out of 15. Pretty good. A little bit better than 66%, near 70%. Okay, so there is an article right here. I'll pull it up for you. Lessons learned from this article. How to play top pair against a check raise. Okay, so we can see that this is the article it's a uh, splitsuit.com article when i google searched the other day um, i'll send this link out in the notes i sent it yesterday but i'll send it again today for you to take a look at but basically um one thing i really like about split suits articles is that uh i guess these are these are basically just transcriptions everything that he says in the text here is what he says within the video so you can watch the video and as you're watching it just follow along and it's word for word what he's saying so i guess he pays somebody to uh to transcribe his stuff every video um, yeah but so that that's what he does everything is here so you can read and follow along as he's speaking but we're not gonna watch the video we'll take some we'll look at the lessons learned so we were on the button we called and open with ace jack offsuit and uh, a three bet would have been just fine but ace jack offsuits calling the big blind causes calls as well the flop comes ace queen seven we have top pair with no draw top pair not a bad kicker but not the best of kickers it's checked to us and we face a 3x check raise from the big blind so the first question that he asks is what nutted hands could he be doing this with well the big blind over called they called after us oftentimes if there's an ace queen if the big blind had the ace queen they'd be three betting three bet squeezing at this in this instance as well as aces and as well as queens so really the only nutted hands that split suit says um is uh let's see here oh possible pocket sevens for three combos of that because there's a seven on the board um that's the only nutted hand really that can be beating us nutted is in like a really good made hand ace king beats us as well but split suit thinks that um uh what does he where does it say here did i put it oh let me increase this there we go that's better so no top or middle sets aces or queens because we can expect a three bet squeeze from those preflop uh split suit also removed ace queen from the range although i would keep it in as that's not always a three bet preflop depending on the player so that could be kept in we could be beaten by a, a top two pair ace queen but the possible nuts this split suit sees it is pocket sevens for three combos and one combo of ace seven suited. Now, there's only one combo because we have an ace. There's an ace on the board. So the other two free combos, the hearts or the, uh, I think it's a club, um, ace seven of clubs, ace seven hearts, they're the only possible ones. So really, um, those are the only hands that are beating us. Three plus one combo. Uh, four combos total are beating us. He could be raising with all those different gut shots and flush draws on this board. If you remember, ace, queen, seven. Let's see it so we can visualize it here. There it is. Okay. So on that ace, queen, seven, um, because we have the ace of diamonds. So uh, the ace, seven of clubs, 
the ace seven of there's a spade club ace seven of hearts spade club yeah so there's only two ace sevens that could beat us right here um as well as the pocket sevens at this point we're definitely ahead but <clears throat> Uh, the, the player who played just elected to call right here with the ace jack. Um, so there's only four combos to worry about and lots of combos we currently beat. Split suit would heavily consider jamming here as opposed to calling. Because if you think the big blind can bomb the turn and river withdraws or bad top pair hands, a call is okay right here. If you think they're capable of just firing again and again, you have position so you can make sure money gets in the pot. But if you think he's on a draw right here, you're allowing him to set his own price to see the draw. Why not jam over the top, make him pay for that draw, um, which and you likely have the best hand right here with the ace jack. If you fly this check raise, then you've capped your range and he can more easily bomb the turn to push you off of your top pair hand. So at this point, oh, whoops. At this point, there's um, uh, uh, 1822 $22 in the pot. He had, it doesn't say right here, but he has roughly like, I don't know, $35 behind or something. Uh, it's a pretty good, he doesn't even have two at two X stack to pot ratio. He can bomb the turn, um, just about any turn, and really scare us into folding our top pair weak kicker. Especially if a lot of spades come, if a lot of kings or tens or jacks come to uh, to complete straights right there, it's just no good. And if we put him on a hand like ace ten, ace nine, even ace eight, it's very possible that that could scare us into thinking that he has two pair because he's bombing again. So in order to avoid um, in this bigger pot, him pushing us off our hand, it's a good idea just to just to shove it versus the check raise here. Um, ta -da -da. Before you call, have a plan for the future and know what you're going to do. With the stack to pot ratio being small, you've got to consider it's going all in. So be prepared for the turn shove. So before you call in a spot like this, just know what you're getting into. Know that that stock to stack to pot ratio is really low. And by calling here, you let the flush draws play almost perfectly for max fold equity, as well as letting him set the price for his draw. So he's got really good fold equity by making this big check raise right now. And you're just calling, letting him set that price and seeing the turn for no additional money. He could be on the flush draw. He could be on a 5-6 suited flush draw, whatever. He's setting his own price to see it. And if he gets there, you're beat at that point. All right, so that's what that video is all about. I really recommend you checking it out. As you watch Split Suits videos, uh, it's really good as you watch it to be mm, glancing down here. You can also copy and paste this kind of stuff as your notes um, on the different hands you know that, that he presents and he talks about. Split Suits stuff is really good. If you haven't been following him, uh, if you don't watch his videos or listen to his podcast, the Red Chip Poker Podcast, you've got to do that because there's so much good value there. So that is that. So uh, this article was about top pair against a check raise. So let's start the Poker Tracker 4 filtering. One pair on the flop. Um, well, we'll just start with this right here any just any top pair hand right here so we have a top pair let's take a look at what comes back just from the top pair filter 448 hands we're a winner when it comes to just having top pair on the flop things are looking good we're only losing in the small blind even in the big blind we're making some decent moolah um on the button not able to capitalize on it so much mm, smallish sample though so things are looking good uh let, let's take a look here ace jack top pair on the flop we, oh, ace-jack, just like he talked about. Uh, let's see this king-eight hand. Probably hit a king. Oh, interesting. We call a three-bet. Oh, we four-bet bluff right here against this guy that likes to three-bet on the button 11% of the time. Um, I think I should have made it bigger to get him to fold because he is in position. Out. Oh, look at that. I should have paid attention to his stack size. I should have just folded to the three-bet right there. And um, I just decided to get it in at this point. Uh, 10, 7. Oh, good. Wow. Interesting. Did I make a note? Capable of button 3-bet bluff with 10, 7 suited. Good. Made a note in the previous hand when I actually played it. Okay, so we can see the filter's working. We got top pair hands. Um, we want to see as well when we were the pre-flop. Two better. Because we want to see when we have the opportunity to C-bet as the two better here. Uh, 
actually no we don't need to see that we just want any top pair hand just like in that prior hand that we saw from split suit he called somebody's open somebody else called me hit top pair so that's fine just hitting top pair but now we want to see face in a check raise so check the flop and then flop opportunities oh wait a second we're not checking the flop I apologize we made a bet any bet whether it's a donk bet whether it's an in position float whether it's a C bet whatever made a bet and then since we bet we have now the opportunity to three bets that means we just basically bet and then faced another bet so now we have the chance to three bet without showdown let's see what happens here great so a small winner only 13 hands but um 189 big blinds per 100 hands so things are looking pretty good right here um we're playing them decently whether or not we are uh three bet shoving on him as a bluff or maybe we're calling his check raise whatever it is so far things are looking at least decent um let's look at when we have ultimate position on the button you'll see what we can learn from these hands nice a squeeze i think we might have reviewed this hand before but that's fine we could just review it again thinking about what he's check raising us with uh so it's not necessarily a top pair it's an over pair um but i selected any top pair hand that's fine we'll just go with this it's only five hands we'll review these five um so we faced a decent sized check raise right there and then we just shove get it in because we know that this guy is capable he doesn't like to fold he check raises about 10% of the time on the flop. So he's mostly a value check raiser right here. And we just decided to get it in. And he had the over pair, which is good. We just had the over over pair, which is lovely. So let's make a note. And actually, I made this one before. Um, um, Great. Okay, Ace, not a good kicker, kind of very similar to that prior hand that we saw. He only has $12 in his stack behind, doesn't like to fold to steals. So he could have a very wide range here. We have top pair, decent kicker. We're definitely going to be betting. He could be calling with Ace-8, Ace-9, Ace-5, Ace-3, all those random Aces that we still beat. Uh, three. But let's take a look at his small blind three bet. 7%. So we could have expected him to definitely 3-bet with Ace-Queen, Ace-King. Maybe not Ace-Jack. So maybe there's one non-2-pair Ace that we're losing to right now. But this is still worth a bet. And this guy is pretty aggressive in general. This raise doesn't necessarily mean that we're beat. Not yet, at least. So we make the call. Good. I'm glad to see that. Ace-Deuce-4-5. We bet $9. Oh, we bet exactly what he has and he just folds. So we could see right here that this was a check raise. I mean, it was some kind of a bluff. It definitely wasn't an ace. It could have been, I don't know, pocket sevens or sixes, something like that. Oh, uh, what are we doing? Small overpair, uh, some kind of bluff. So what I'm doing right now is getting, I'm trying to get a good idea of what players check raise us on. We saw on that prior hand, um, that split suit hand. Oh, I never recorded the results. I can't even remember the results. Da, 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 flop, turn. Oh, we never saw it. Oh, that's what happened. He shoved on that scary card, and then we folded. So we'll never see the results right here. We don't know what he had. Um, but he could have been doing that with just a ton of different cars. We allowed him to set his price to get there on a on a turn 10 that completes the board or completes some of his draws. Not so much fun. Um, so, um, yeah, some kind of bluff he had guaranteed. But we continued and then fired again at it, which I'm happy to see that. 
$1.16. A min check raise from, look at that, from a very loose passive guy. I mean, uh, he C bets 100% of the time, but that's because he only raises pre flop with really strong hands. So, of course, he's C betting so much. Um, he folds on the flop two out of three doesn't like to fold on the turn. So he's very flop honest. I think this is a value check raise most likely. And so that's why I folded right there. Um, I didn't have much of anything. I was just, you know, calling right now. Sure, I'm in position, but this guy just tells me with his stats, he is super value oriented and he's flop honest and he's check raising right here. He hit a set of ducks, threes or nines, or even has a, a pair of aces that he just slow played with pre-flop. So I am going to consider this, even though we didn't see it. Overpair or better, right there. Some sort of value. So the guy folds 88% of the time, which is quite a bit. 7 out of 8 means he's foldy, but... He decides to call. So right there, that tells us that it's probably a pretty narrow range that he's calling with. 9-8, um, just two overs. His fold to C-bets 50% of the time. It's not much to go on. But the 7-7 seven, seven deuce chicken board, as Alex Fitzgerald calls them, because it's a board that's so hard to hit. When two players clash over it, they're playing chicken. You know, who backs down first? Uh, so he checks. I bet. He check raises two and a half-ish, two and a half times. And then so I just, oh, I call with my two overs. I am not a fan of that call at all. Um, what am I hoping for? I'm probably hoping that he checks the turn and then I bet as a, as a double barrel bluff. But I would prefer betting this one time. He check raises. It's not even a min check raise. It's check raise for a little bit trying to get value possibly. I think I should have folded right here. The king comes, and he bets five bucks, which is a pretty decent sized bet. Five into seven ten is just over two thirds pot. Uh, so I'm not a fan. I've got to fold. Good, and I fold. So I'm going to say some sort of value again. Two times we've seen some sort of value. Pocket aces. I'm loving it. 75 cents. He made it $1.50 more. I min three bet him. Oh. Hmm. He's a pretty relatively tight three better. I think I should have I should have four bet more to get max value out of the guy. I think I should have. Um, the king jack eight. We bet he check raises uh, exactly three x right here, and then we fold. I'm not a fan of the fold, but it was because he does not like to fold on the flop. Out of position check raise, 25%. It's only one out of four. Man, I should have jammed it. I should have. There's so many. Uh, queen 10, he's got clubs in his range. Uh, just like that other hand, our aces are here, our best most of the time right here. I should have done this. Um, so I don't know what to make of this. It's possible. Uh, either or value or uh, a bluff i just don't know because i didn't see it because he is capable of bluffing right here um i should have he see bets only 13 percent of the time so as the better maybe as the better he's flop honest uh but facing aggression maybe not so flop honest interesting i want to see more hands on this guy for sure i want to play a lot more with mad max yeah i'm not sure about that hand what he had uh five hands in the cutoff get called we bet now this is just an in position raise um almost 3x fold 67 percent of the time yep so i prefer yeah i like the bet i'm not super happy with the call um this is such a wet board i think i like because he is aggressive no i like the call right here and let's see what he does on the turn because he is super aggressive has a big stack is maybe high on life and running well tilt you know positive tilt so maybe he'll just continue betting no matter what even if we do um uh bet and then three bet then what do we do on the turn right here on a crappy card like this we're still we're not super happy with our hand even though we just called he's got lots of sets in his range um sure he has a lot of under pairs jacks and tens and stuff that might not have three bet pre but i'm not a big fan of open and then calling and then uh i'm sorry i'm not a big fan of open and then three betting on that flop 
So I like that. I'm good with that. And then we just check behind a6. Oh, nice. Okay. So nut flush draw some kind of bluff again right here. Great. Check raise, almost 3x. Why do you size it down a little bit lower? Yeah, never know what he had. Uh, he did overcall. He has lots of draws in his range, but he also has sets and stuff that he's trying to get value. Either or, another time. The exclamation mark just means more than once. You know, if I see something happen five times, I'll have it typed out once and then four exclamation marks beyond it. These are all losing hands, so we'll probably not know any of these, what he had. We bet, man, $1.50 times 3 would be four fifty. He's betting 3.5 times our sizing, our raise sizing. Um, fold to see bet, what's his check raise? 13%? Yeah, this could easily be a bluff right here. Um, but I just don't know. Could be value, could be for a bluff. It is a, on the bigger sizing. He could be trying to push us off our hand with a couple of spades, with just a couple of over cards, like a king queen. And if he hits a queen, he'll assess it, at, you know, on the turn. Um, yeah. So I'm uh, I'm I'm fine with the bet for sure. But that's three and a half x that kind of bet sizing, uh, especially if it would have happened on the turn or river. I would say is for value on the flop. That could be just a bluff. So really, just don't know. What a shame. That's one of the things about these hands. When you don't see a showdown, you don't necessarily know what they had. Uh, well, three deuce deuce is hard to hit, and he could be, he doesn't like to fold to see bets. His check raise is zero, so can't put anything into that. Oh, he's not check raising, he's raising. So his in position raise c bet is zero on the flop out of four instances. So this is probably some kind of a value raise, whether he's just got a, a two over pairs like tens or nines, two over and over pair like tens, nines, eights or something, thinking that we are just bluffing here. The six shouldn't scare him, so he bets and then we have nothing, so we just fold. I think my guess is I was calling with just a hopeful call right here um, in order to hit an ace, hit a queen, or we check, he checks behind, then we bet the river as a bluff. So really, because of because of the way I played it, I don't know what he had there, either or. Oh, I remember reviewing this hand the other day. So we bet, and then he bet 450. Uh, we re-raised, and then he called, and it was an all-in. And if I remember right, it was a value with pocket aces. Yeah, this guy just slow played aces pre-flop. Over called with aces in the small blind. Some over pair. Yep. Small over pair, some sort of value, over pair plus. Uh, you know, I'm just going to do this. One, two. Don't need to be so exact. So, some kind of bluff, some sort of value, over pair, or better. And then um, either or has been four times so far. Take a look at the rest of these real quick, like... Flopping the overpair plus the gutter. Uh, face a 3x raise. I remember reviewing this hand the other day. 450 again. So at this point, oh, I want to call. I got the overpair. I could hit a 5. I could hit an 8 uh, for a nice set of trips. So I called. And the 4 comes. We have 2 pair. And then what did he check raise with? A 7-6. I got lucky on that river. 2 paired it. But it was a value. Definitely a value uh, check raise. So we've seen lots of check raising for value. Something to take note of as we play our future sessions. Um, Ace do simply, what's this guy limp in with? 0% of the time, out of 700 hands, zero limps. And he, oh no, it wasn't a limp, it was a min raise. Okay, well, min raises look really weak. We have an ace, so we popped it up. <coughs> Excuse me. Ace, weak pair. We bet now a min raise and a call could be lots of aces. Every ace that he has is better than us, as two pair or a better kicker at this point. So we just give up our crap hand right there and just chalk it up to a, uh, what you call it. But who knows what he has. It could have been a bluff. Check race only 5%.
one out of 20 instances no it was a value check raise right there he had an ace one final hand so we've got 13 instances 13 hands that we're looking at when we get check raised on the flop with and without showdown uh maybe not check raise but we get raised but i said top pair hand made one pair on the flop or made top oh yeah that's right this filter sometimes gives you just those uh just those paired hands as well So it was just a straight bluff. We didn't have anything at all. Let's see here. We raised pre and he just called. So basically by raising pre, we're, we're repping a strong hand. We have every ace in our range as well as every pocket pair. Lots of suited connectors, broadways and stuff for sure. When the ace hits, he doesn't have an ace necessarily in his range or he does have aces, but probably not as many as, as us. We have every ace in our range. He calls, so he probably has closer to the better aces in the range, depending on the player, you know. So I just put him on an ace right here. Uh, it could have just, it, that could have easily been just a, a bluff though. You know, because if we didn't have a, an ace, we're folding just about everything. So either or, not sure. So we got four, five, plus five is 10, 11, 12, 13 hands. Good, we, we, we recorded all 13. So for sure we saw six value raises. Two bluff raises and five unsure but we can assume at this same ratio uh you know a ratio of six to two is 75 percent right here so like i like i talked about earlier today in the course skill number two from ed miller um he said 90 percent of the time when your opponents are putting in big bets and check raises and raises post flop 90 percent of the time they have it they're not bluffing that often and what we just found small sample kind of bears that out so it's a good idea when you are facing the check raise when you're facing the in position raise after betting on the flop the turn or the river you definitely want to be ranging your opponents think about how well that boards hits their range however they got to that board whether they called pre whether we th whether they three bit whether they checked the big blind whatever it is think about that um, put them on a range of hands put them on a possible strength range as well and if your hand can beat that strength range or you have a really good draw to something better like Ed Miller talked about go ahead and make the call but when you're facing post flop check raises especially in the turn and river consider folding you're better off that way alrighty well that's it for this second uh, session thank you very much oh So, I'm sorry, I apologize. Hallelujah just said, Oh man, for how long I was listening to your voice in broadcast app, now I just want to watch some poker study. And yep, I remember your voice so many hours straight learning with you. Damn, what about your dude, your friend who lives in Thailand? Is he still around? Um, you know, I'm not sure which friend in Thailand. Hmm, there might have been... So, it sounds like, Hallelujah, you're talking about a prior podcast when I talked about somebody in Thailand. I just, I don't recall that at all. So I apologize. I'm sorry. Don't remember that right there. Um, but yeah, so that ends this second study session for the day. Tomorrow, I'll be back bright and early for one study session. Coming back later in the day uh, for a second study session tomorrow. So uh, that'll be some fun stuff. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending. And you'll be seeing an email from me pretty soon. If you're not already on the email list, um, go to smartpokerstudy.com slash 28 days to sign up. Thank you very much, and I will catch you tomorrow.